welcome to the Shifting Mindsets with Shani podcast. I'm Shani, and this is the Power Series, which is a collective of life lessons that will help ignite the power that's already within you. The focus is to leave you feeling refreshed, renewed, and most importantly, more powerful within your ability to strengthen the way that you do life, and most importantly, yourself. I am your host, and I'm a mental health therapist, an author, and a mindset coach. So join me every week on Thursdays at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for your dose of power. All right, now let's go ahead and jump into our topic for today. Hey, hey, y'all. I am so excited to talk to you all today. Welcome to Shifting Mindsets with Shawnee. This is episode five and um, a moment of reflection and gratitude that I want to share with you all. I really challenge myself with putting this podcast together because I know that it's something that I've been needing to do, been wanting to do for over a year now, and I've actually been preparing to do it. So the fact that I pushed myself to be consistent, um, to really take the time out, to set aside time to put this podcast into play. Um, is amazing and I've challenged myself to do that because I'm wanting to get outside of my own comfort zone I'm really ready to break free from things that I have created that have put limitations on my life inside and out so I am so appreciative of all of the listeners that I've had like I am in a space where I can actually make money off the podcast and do sponsorships so I'm excited thank you thank you thank you to all of the listeners all right y'all so that's my moment of truth I appreciate it today's topic is the power of entrepreneurship and the quote that I have for you today is every time you state what you want or believe you're the first to hear it it's a message to both you and others about what you think is possible don't put a ceiling on yourself and that is a quote by Oprah Winfrey now Oprah is somebody that I know I will work with in some capacity one day and I'm so looking forward to that day and I know that everything that I do from here on out is helping me curate that experience that is to be had and I'm going to be so excited to share it with you all once that time comes about because trust me (laughs) I have faith of a mustard seed and I know that it is going to happen. So where I'm at with my weekly mood is really focusing on the fact that it's my time to shine. So I'm really in that go-getter mindset. And the reason why that I have to be in this go-getter mindset is because I recognize that there are a lot of opportunities coming to me and there are a lot of challenging thoughts that are coming along with it that are speaking about whether or not if I'm deserving or worthy enough or have it enough, you know, skill set, talent to be able to, you know, follow through with the opportunities that are being presented to me. So I'm focusing on casting out any and all negative thinking that is not for my highest and greatest good. And that makes me feel so good on today because um, the past couple of days, I've just kind of been in my mind thinking about, okay, oh my goodness, I have all of these opportunities. What am I going to do? And I had to really stop and say, what have you already been preparing for these opportunities? Why are these opportunities presented to you? There has to be something about you that's special. So go ahead and just capitalize off of the aspect that somebody needs to hear your testimony. Somebody needs to hear your voice. Somebody needs to see your face in some capacity because it's going to allow them to have a breakthrough. And while you're helping other people break through, you're going to be breaking through as well. So I'm willing to take that step and come outside of my comfort zone so that way I can get there. All right. So I want to go ahead and just jump into this week's topic the power of being an entrepreneur and the reason why that I wanted to talk about this this week is because I have been a full-time entrepreneur for over three years now and I don't talk a lot about my story and the the mindset that comes along with it I mean there are so many different challenges that individuals face on a routine basis and there's a lot of things in the media that's talked about on a routine basis and I want to be able to highlight some of those things off of my own experience and the assets that I think individuals need in order to be a successful entrepreneur because it's all about those internal workings rather than the external things because those external things can't come unless you have that inside taken care of. So there are two different things that I've been hearing across social media like the past couple of years about entrepreneurship and one is 
individuals don't want to date someone who has a nine to five job or you know if you go more deeper than surface level a nine to five mentality also um, there's an, another thought that you should build your business while working your nine to five and I agree wholeheartedly with both those statements and the reason why I agree with them is because as individuals we kind of put these limitations on ourselves and we don't allow ourselves to grow and actually discipline ourselves to do the work a lot of individuals who are stuck in positions aren't happy and they're just allowing themselves to settle and for individuals who are allowing themselves to settle that means that you're going to settle for um, an employer but you're also settling in other areas of your life because think about it you spend so much time with an employer that the time outside of that is impacted by where you spend most of your time and if you're not able to engage in hobbies interests healthy relationships and things of that nature it's going to be really difficult for you to actually fulfill your whole life purpose because everything is involved with your life purpose the people that you engage with on a routine basis the hobbies that you have the way that you think about yourself the opportunities that can be presented to you and I think that is just a very big limiting belief when you have that mentality while the whole build your business on working your nine to five yes absolutely my current entrepreneurship journey started back in 2016 actually this year makes it five years since I started that journey um, and it has been something that's been really wonderful just really beautiful um, just being able to uh, gather information and become really solid and confident in what I wanted to do in life at this time five years ago I was working on becoming licensed as a therapist so I really sat down and I started attending all of these workshops and things like that on a monthly basis with other entrepreneurs who were doing the same thing and what that did was it allowed me to understand you know my purpose and go into those spaces where other people were at where I could help build on you know the confidence that hey this is something that's possible it's within my reach because I'm putting myself in rooms with people where I have no idea how I'm going to get there but I knew that things that they would say to me would lead me to being able to build up that confidence but also that knowledge and that level of awareness that I would need to be an entrepreneur myself my whole thought process on being an entrepreneur is that the mindset of an entrepreneur is what makes you an entrepreneur and I feel that it all starts within the mind I have always known that I would be an entrepreneur um, from middle school I wrote it in my actual me book where it was a book about you know current events that were happening during my middle school year um, political things the price of what things were when it came to like milk food gas things of that nature but also I put down my future goals and I have that book till today where I put I'll be an entrepreneur I'll be a business owner and from that moment I started to manifest a life where I had no idea exactly how I was going to get there and I didn't grow up around entrepreneurs I mean I still don't have anyone in my family who are entrepreneurs um, in a level where they've actually taken it and actually generate money from it all so I was just kind of going off a feeling of knowing and learning about individuals that I would watch on TV the people that I would see you know just in the community just things of that nature it was just a lot of chatter but it wasn't really something that I was around and I was able to physically see um, when it comes to having faith of a mustard seed as I said earlier that has always been me and that is something I'm so proud of and I really want to give myself um, recognition for that and I think that as human beings we have to do that in order for us to really be able to grow into the beings that we're just destined to be um, I don't often pick apart things that I do really well and, and acknowledge that within myself so I'm happy to be able to acknowledge that publicly it's not something I had anticipated on doing today but having the faith of a mustard seed is something that is so valuable um, all you have to do is just recognize that hey this is who I am this is what I desire I don't know how I'm going to get there but I know that the journey that I'm on will take me to the destination that I'm supposed to be at and after I'm in that destination I will be led to another destination and I'm okay with whatever that journey is because I know it's going to be something of value for me where I can step into my purpose step into my truth but also be able to honor the most high in all the things that I do
as I said, I wrote about being an entrepreneur middle school. Now, what did I do in middle school that had me thinking in some ways I would be an entrepreneur? First and foremost, I was the person who babysat kids, my mom's friend's kids, and whoever else's kids, and I made income from doing that. It wasn't a lot of money, however, it was income, and it was something that I took a lot of pride into doing. Now, I also braided hair. Now, a lot of people would not know this, but in high school, I actually went to cosmetology school. Um, but before high school, I was braiding hair. I started braiding when I was about six, seven years old, and I was just playing around with family members' hair. I remember it was my mom's goddaughter, and I braided her hair. She was older than me, and it turned out so good, and I received so many compliments, and I think that that gave me such a boost of confidence that I just kept going on doing and all throughout like middle school high school I would do my own hair back then um, just like braid straight to the back um, as well as like crochet those things were really popular so I would always do my own hair and I would have um, peers walk up to me and say who did your hair and I would tell them I did it and they would tell me I was lying so I was always laughing at people who didn't believe in me because I knew what my abilities were it's just you know people will look at you on the outside and say you're not capable of doing a lot of things but me I knew that I didn't have to um, try to convince other people that I was who I said I was and I think that that's the most important thing when it comes to being an entrepreneur you do not have to tell people this is who I am and, and this is what I can do I can just show you you know, you listening to my podcast, you can probably pick apart some things about myself that I may not have told you, you know, on my own, but you can see, you know, and there's something about seeing, knowing, um, and not disregarding because that's what my peers were doing. They were disregarding what I said because they didn't know me. But when you take the time to get to know somebody, you know, you really get a chance to dive deep into who that person is, like what made them want to step outside of their comfort zone and do whatever it is that they're doing because it takes a whole lot of courage to be an entrepreneur I mean it takes a lot of courage to do a lot of things nowadays but to have a skill set to show up and do it consistently and do it from the heart that that takes a whole lot so I think that acknowledging that um, within individuals from a from an early on age can help you to really curate something so beautiful comes to like building relationships with other entrepreneurs but also when it comes to just building relationships with people in general in the professional field in which you know you find purpose in it's always good so my journey did not stop in middle school in high school it was a whole nother game it was a whole nother game now with high school came more money okay but it was a completely different avenue in which I received money so um, the two things that were really popular for me to start doing one of course I got a job in high school but after I got a job I did um, have a group of friends and we started talking about like throwing parties and things of that nature so that's something that we started doing and you know booking hotel rooms their event spaces um, oh my goodness it was bananas and when I look back at it it was so much fun like I loved all the behind the scenes things I was a part of everything. Everybody had a role that they played, but I was that one individual who could actually step inside of each role and do it on my own. And whenever someone else fell short, I was picking up the slack. And it was something that I felt really good about doing because it just came as second nature. It was definitely innate within me, and it's something that I took on and I took serious. Um, and I know that if I had, you know, a really good support system around me, that it could have elevated even more but because you know it was just something just to do for fun um it was cut short but during my high school years I do recall one year where you know just throwing parties and being creative with the different um type of parties and things of that nature Whew, good times I have pictures that I can reflect on about it so those are some memories I never want to lo ever ever lose Another thing that I did in high school was I did taxes. That's exactly when I started doing my own taxes at the age of 16. Um, I had my mom's friend do my taxes one year, and then she kind of showed me exactly what she did on the online system, TurboTax specifically, and um, she taught me how to do it, and then I started reading up on how to do it, and after that I did all of my taxes for over 10 years, and then I did my family members' taxes um, I was dating somebody I may do their family 
interest taxes it was just all over the place it was something that I really really loved doing um, I never went and got certified or anything like that I never took a course it was just all information that I gathered on my own until I decided to start you know my business and then I had CPA and things of that nature so if you're needing a CPA I always recommend go that route because they have a lot of different loopholes and things of that nature that you may need outside of just regular taxes so during my adulthood um, the first business venture that I have was a jury business with my sister and we were doing it with the two other young ladies however we had to venture off and do it um, just between the two of us because it was kind of getting really unorganized and as I said earlier like being a business owner and being able to you know have a, a role in every single area was something I'm really good at and I take it very serious and when I recognize other people don't have that level of capacity to be able to do it you know it's like I have to shift gears because I'm not a controlling individual however I'm a very practical individual and I do my research so did the jury business it did not take off at all y'all it, it did not take off we spent a whole lot of money me and my sister and my sister still has a lot of the um the items that we purchased for it as well so shout out to my sister Sparkel. um I know she's working on doing some things with those items and I know that they're gonna look beautiful um and sometimes for my birthday and um just when she decides she wants to gift me with something she'll make me some jewelry very beautiful jewelry um and so that that didn't take off but it was okay it was still fun to be able to register the business for the first time and that was the first time I was legit with the business legally um and that's when I started reading up on business law and taxes and all of that stuff when it came to the state information that I would need to have um I then transitioned over into an MLM started connecting with more people learning more about business that didn't take off either. I spent a whole lot of money investing in it, but it was still a really good experience because at that time I had to actually talk to people and connect with other people and talk to them about my business that I was doing with the MLM and that helped me get outside of my comfort zone. And I used to be shaken and so nervous when it came to like the scripts that they gave us to talk to people, but I went ahead and, and allowed myself to, to just go ahead and go forward with it. It didn't matter. If everybody gave me a no, that's okay. That's fine. I can deal with that no. However, I couldn't deal with the fact that, hey, I wasn't progressing with all of the work that I was doing. And that's when I knew it was time for me to pivot and kind of go about my business and find something that I'm actually really good at. But there were a lot of skill sets that I was able to take when it came to like um, listening to motivational videos and things of that nature. I had never done that before. So there's always something to look forward to when you're venturing off into entrepreneurship life. And whatever that is, whether it's, you know, learning about finances, um, um, getting daily inspiration, networking, whatever that is, find those avenues and make sure that you dive into it and get all of the information that you can from it. Now, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I am such a driven individual that even though in 2016 is when I started my mental health private practice, I have had maybe three or four other businesses that I've started as well now how are they going um we can say one is completely over with and I've transitioned another one and the other ones are baking slowly and I'm going to say slowly because when you have several different things going on there's one that's going really well but with the other ones there are a lot of different missing pieces and I'm working on allowing myself to just go at a pace that is healthy and not rushed because these projects are really important to me and you're listening to one of them, which is this podcast. And um, I just want to make sure that I'm allowing myself to use all of the content that I've created throughout the last couple of years and I'm actually applying it because that's something that I have not been doing. I've been just collecting data, doing a lot of research on myself um, the, the clientele that I work with, the people that are around me getting inspiration from all of the things that I'm exposed to on a, on a routine basis. So I'm just allowing it to be beautifully crafted in a slow manner in which I do not miss out on anything and I am creating a lot of patience and discipline within myself and it's beautiful. So I'm looking forward to telling you all more about those and maybe some future episodes. When it comes to having a healthy mindset as an entrepreneur, there are two things that I feel that every entrepreneur needs to have, and that is peace and love, because when you don't have those things, it creates a lot of a 
and steadiness and that's within how you do things um for me specifically when I didn't have that peace or maybe even that self-love intensely as I needed to there was a lot of overworking myself um becoming irritable easily with other people there was disorganization literally disorganization when it came to scheduling things a lack of boundaries saying yes to every single thing that came across my path um when it came to opportunities and not enough of sitting back and saying you know what I think I can go ahead and take this I don't think I need to take this like what what, how is this going to be a part of my purpose there wasn't a lot of like challenging those opportunities that were coming but also there wasn't a lot of me setting myself up for success and allowing who I am naturally to not um mingle with who I was professionally so who I am in my home environment is like okay let me go ahead and act like the boss and it's like no you don't have to have that head on 24 7 so you have to be able to learn how to have a good balance within all of that but let me tell you when I learned to allow myself to make peace with peace and love there were so many different things that were crafted out of that I started to have stable moods not you know being not being all over the place being more organized within who I am as an individual especially when it came to my thoughts like being able to sort out your thoughts and your emotions is so important because your mind carries everything so if you are constantly disorganized within your thought process everything outside of you is going to be naturally a replication of that disorganization with that love and peace also helped me to build a healthier relationship with myself and other people so recognizing that hey I don't have to project off what's going on in my mind with other people when that's all me it's not always on other people to hear certain things or for me to have a perception that another person has said something to me because of something that actually is a trigger for me um so it also allowed me to really enhance my rational thinking patterns when it came to making business decisions and I didn't make any impulsive decisions based off of the fact that okay I just I just want to do something you know I hear an idea about something and then I'm like oh let me jump on it because I lost a lot of money specifically in 2020 from that type of ideal of things like um just being talked into doing things that may not be for me may be a resource that I need to collect for somebody else but recognize that when you're in the, on your entrepreneurship journey everything isn't going to be for you and it's okay for you to recognize that and give it a no because there may be no's that you have to get in order to get to the yes but if you're constantly saying yes to everything else you're going to be telling yourself no in some ways no you don't need rest no you can't take that vacation um no you can't go off and take this day off so you want to make sure that you're being intentional about everything um another thing that I was able to gain when I had more peace and love is financial abundance and who doesn't want the money I know y'all want the money I mean come on now we want to be able to really live free and in life unfortunately we do have to have money take care of all of these bills and these children that we have but also to curate beautiful experiences super 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 dope important thing that individuals should know is that when you become an entrepreneur remember this is all in the mindset of being an entrepreneur right you have to recognize that there are going to be people who are watching you whether you know it or not and the space and how you show up the thought process and how you show up how you show up emotionally people can pick up on all of those things and authenticity is how people are going to be able to pick apart whether or not if they want to present an opportunity to you so you always want to make sure that you're coming from a place of truth and not trying to replicate something somebody else did because that's an uncomfortable feeling and if you've ever tried to show up as somebody else because you saw them do it then you'll know you know what it feels off it feels off and then when you are producing whatever that is you're not going to feel confident about it at all and I know that you know there are exceptions to the rule but over here on this podcast we focus on just being who you are supposed to be not what other people have told you you should be and not what looks cool okay so people can pick up on chaos if you have chaos going on in your life know that it's going to come across and there's going to be missed opportunities because of it I recall a time where I picked up on someone's chaos and I had to let go of an opportunity and trust me it was going to be a really great opportunity for me to be seen by thousands and thousands of people but there was no way that I was going to 
you know, kind of let go of, of what I truly believe in for an opportunity when I know that that person's heart wasn't like my heart is and that means it's pure I'm able to separate what I have going on in my own life and not project it onto other people and I think that having a level of integrity is always important no matter how you show up and you do have to go ahead and say no to some of those things when that level of integrity that you have isn't being matched by another person our model on that thing is that if things are chaotic within they will show externally so always 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 mindful of how you treat yourself independently and how you treat yourself outwardly when you're in public settings. So I got to leave y'all with some wisdom today that helped me along my entrepreneurship journey. And there are three different things that I want you to do starting today so that way you can start setting yourself up for success to help strengthen who you are today so that way your tomorrow and the year after and years to come after that will be based off of a stronger foundation, um, just based on what you do today. So number one, create a daily, midday, and mental health check-in for yourself. Literally, just check in with yourself. Say, how am I doing? What do I need? How can I give that to myself today? So that way you're not thinking like over the top. A lot of individuals will say, you know, I'm not feeling well. I'm stressed out. I need to go to sleep. I need a vacation. And, you know, some of those things are not within your reach. So check in with yourself and be realistic about something that you can give yourself. And if you're not sure, then it's important that you do this every single day. So that way you can curate an experience for yourself where it will be something that's easy to do. So number two, I want you to identify what brings you love and peace. There are so many different things that can bring you love and peace. And I don't want you to limit yourself. So, you know, go above and beyond with whatever that's going to look like. And number three, I want you to schedule those activities into your routine, right? So whatever brings you love and peace. For me, one thing that I really enjoy doing is sitting down with a book and putting on some soft music in the background. No words, just classical music. And I'm telling you, every single time I do that, I always feel peaceful afterwards, no matter what. So you got to think about those things that no matter how it's shown to you when you're in a certain space, if it shows up and you actually actively participate in it, it will create exactly what it is that you need. And you don't have to be able to see it vividly before you dive into it. So take those steps, curate them into your own, really take a leap of faith in how you move and operate from here on out. All right, y'all. Remember earlier, I gave y'all a quote by Oprah Winfrey, and I want to repeat it for you all today because I think that this quote is very important. And I think that you should take it, breathe it in, grab onto it, and make sure that you can apply it to your everyday life. Now, Oprah said, every time you state what you want or believe, you're the first to hear it. It's a message to both you and others about what you think is possible. Don't put a ceiling on yourself. After I said that quote, the instant thought of Lil Wayne, No Ceilings came to mind. And if you're not a hip hop fan, um, that's okay. I want you to recognize what No Ceilings means. It means that you are allowing yourself to think so far and beyond that there are no limitations on what it is that you can do and who you can be. So the benefits of being an entrepreneur represent to me freedom unlimited creativity and the nurturing of your why and I hope that those benefits really register within your mind so that way you can start to curate what freedom looks like to you what unlimited creativity looks like to you and then also what it is about your why that you need to show up and show out for it on a routine basis let's go ahead and jump on into our prayer so we can close out for the day I pray that you are enlightened to step into your power. Step into a purpose-driven life that is specifically designed for you. I pray that you stop questioning who you are meant to be and become one with the clear knowing that you are meeting that version of yourself every single day. I'll talk with you all on the next episode of Shifting Mindset with Shauna.